On the bench today, we have the Squire 40th Anniversary Stratocaster Vintage Edition. Seafoam green guitars to me are just beautiful and have a special place in my heart. I've mentioned in a video one time before that I started to really admire Seafoam green Stratocasters, in particular when I saw the movie Stranger Than Fiction. If you like this video, click like, subscribe, and notify. In the video, you see me assembling the guitar instead of pulling it out of a box. I bought the loaded body on an eBay auction as well as a neck. Both were for a Squire 40th Anniversary Stratocaster. I got both for about $160 and they were listed as new, so it was a much cheaper approach to assemble a new guitar than it was for me to buy a new one. The new guitars retail for about $299 and the used versions, to be honest with you, are about the same price. They seem to really hold their value, I think because of the reputation of the specific model. I really love the 40th anniversary Strat and Tele necks and purchase them regularly now for build necks on projects. The satin feel is great, and for the most part, they're pretty well made. The Telecaster necks, I think, are actually better than the Stratocaster necks, but that's just my opinion based on my experience. So some specifications on the guitar. The body wood is made from an Asian wood from the Mora tree that has tonal properties similar to mahogany, so it's used in guitar construction, and it's pronounced as NATO. The body finish is satin, which is okay. I mean, I like a gloss guitar body on a Stratocaster. The satin is okay. It's just not my first choice. I really love the color though. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is only an aesthetic thing and is purely personal. I know there's a lot of folks out there that will look at the pickguard, the anodized aluminum pickguard that comes with this model and think, God, that's beautiful. I really love that. And that's really cool. The thing is, is I don't. I don't like the anodized feel on my hands. I also don't like the color at all. And so I had a new three-ply Stratocaster white or, I don't know, parchment uh, colored pickguard. So I replaced it out when I was assembling the guitar. And to me, I think that it looks better. But again, that's just my opinion. I know there's going to be, it's a totally personal choice preference type of thing. The neck shape is C. The neck is made of maple, has a scale length of 25.5, has a standard truss rod, and the finish on the neck is satin. The fingerboard material is maple, fret size is narrow tall, number of frets is 21, and something always surprises me to find on a guitar at this price point, the guitar comes with a bone nut. Um, some people will argue about that and say that they're actually uh, synthetic. I have two of the 40th anniversary Stratocaster necks right now, and I compared the nuts on both of them. One of them, the one I installed on this guitar, to be honest with you, looks like a synthetic bone. Um, the other one, when compared to my other guitars, and just the feeling, and is, um, in my opinion, actually bone and not synthetic. The electronic configuration for pickups and electronics on this guitar are three single coils, the neck, middle, and bridge pickups. Squire describes them as proprietary Onlyco 5 single coil pickups. Standard and traditional Stratocaster control layout. The pickup switch is five way. The bridge design, six screw vintage style. A note though that I've noticed on this specific bridge that I've never noticed before that each of the saddles actually have Squire printed on them instead of Fender. I apologize, I've never looked at that closely at any of the um, the bridges on my uh, Squire's prior because to be honest with you, I'm usually getting cheaper models like the Affinity or Bullet and I'm replacing them. So I haven't really looked at them closely. The one note that I would say about this bridge is the block on the back of the bridge is very thin, skinny, something that either I would replace the bridge or replace the block itself. The tuning machines are vintage Klusen style. A few notes about the neck on this guitar. Rarely do I have to adjust the truss rod as much as I needed to on this neck on a new guitar. Also the frets from the 12th fret forward all rock to some degree when I put a leveling tool on. Not a lot, but enough to notice. The front ends were in the middle to me in rating. When I ran my hand up and down the sides of the fretboard, it didn't really hurt, 
but it wasn't smooth either. So I'd rate them as not too rough, but not too smooth either. You could say that this specific neck needs some attention. I did have another of the same model neck, as I said before on hand, and I checked it as well. The neck was straight and did not need adjusting. The frets did rock in four or five locations, and the edge of the frets felt exactly the same as the one I installed on this guitar. Overall, the finish on the body and the neck is excellent. When I weighed this guitar, it weighed seven pounds, two ounces. Overall, I would rate this guitar as a very good value at $299. There's so much about the guitar that I would not upgrade or change. That being said, it is also a very good modding platform. I really like the pickups, but they could be replaced if you really wanted to. The only two things I would probably upgrade in the long run is the wiring harness and the bridge. Otherwise, I'd leave the guitar as is. Since I had to assemble this guitar, I could not really test the out-of-the-box playability. Based upon my experience with other 40th anniversary models, I would expect that this guitar was close to being playable out-of-the-box. I had to adjust the string height and intonation for a standard playing experience. I'd recommend this guitar to anyone after a good setup. It would last the player for years, as is, and bring enjoyment to the player. If you like this video, click like, subscribe, and notify.